All right, we're here at MB Defense Solutions, and this is Ben Wallace. Hi, guys. And what we're going to do uh, right now is put this barrel on this upper. Now, this barrel here, I uh, got this from Palmetto State Armory, and this upper here, we got this from What a Country. They got these awesome Colt M16A1 parts kits from about the 1970s. So, instead of just getting a Palmetto State Armory M16A1, we're going to actually make this part Colt, like the original. As it should be. As it should be. So, Ben, this is you guys' workbench. Yep, sorry for the clutter. As you can see, it's a bit dark over here. We just remodeled and freshly painted the workshop. Mm. So once we get done with that and get the lights hooked up, it's going to be real nice. Yeah, so kind of cluttered right now. But what is one thing that you do that other shops don't do? Well, generally speaking, what we do for our customers is that we let our customers have access to our workshop. So if you get some parts that, that you got from us or somewhere else, or some upgrades, triggers, muzzle devices, barrels, handguards, what have you. If you know what you're doing, you can come here and use our tools free of charge. As long as you don't break them or take them, you're good to go. It's completely free, right? Awesome. So let me show you how I prefer to put an AR upper together, right? So I usually use some sort of form of anti-seize on the barrel nut on the barrel extension itself here because I have dealt with countless barrels you know when somebody wants say a different barrel installed in their gun and it's just impossible to take out because it's locked up by carbon and heat and cold expanding and shrinking over the years it just doesn't want to come out well just putting a little bit of anti-seize I'm using this graphite based one that way you can use copper if you want. I'm just using it because it creates a lot less of a mess and it blends in with the finish of the uh, gun here. And I just twist it around to spread it, right? And there, it's on. I also prefer when I'm tightening on barrel nuts to use the Magpul Bev block because when you put it in, it sticks and actuates on the chamber of the barrel itself. Whereas other style blocks like this one, when you're torquing it down, it can cause undue pressure and strain on the receiver. I, I use this a lot of the time because it's, it's easier than pulling out the bev block. If I'm feeling lazy, like if I'm doing a muzzle device or changing out, say, a gas block, I'll just stick it in there. That way it can have something to hold the upper together to be able to work on it. All right. Because, you know, I'm not an octopus. I doubt there are many humans that are. So how does this work, this bev block thing? So it, you put it in place, you put it forward, and then it comes with these little plastic pins, and you put it in the front detent hole, and that holds it in place. But we're not done yet. Then, and here's where it's a bit of a, like a pain for most people, is that you need a bolt without the bolt head or any of the parts in there. So you, you just need, need a, the bolt carrier. A, a stripped bolt carrier. And then, if you watch here, you put that stripped bolt carrier in the back, and then it, cl it clicks into place like that. Mm. That way, all of the torquing and the strain you're putting on the gun is on the barrel and the threads. You're not putting it on the receiver itself, because, I mean, this is steel, this is aluminum. You know, it goes without being said. Let's tighten this up in our bench. I'm going to position it a little bit forward like that so I can have some room to tighten it with my wrench. My personal favorite AR Armors wrench is the True Glow one. I like it so much I even engraved our logo on it. So I do have a torque wrench. For the barrel nuts, generally speaking, I don't bother with the torque wrench, usually. Yeah, we will use yeah. it today because, I mean, this is not my gun. So generally speaking, if you know what you're doing and you have a feel for putting the torque down, and you've been doing it a lot like I have, you don't need the torque wrench. But if you're a noob, like when I was starting out, having the torque wrench definitely helps. So today, I will be starting off using the armor's wrench, but then we will be finishing off with the torque wrench. All right, and it's for the M16A1s, it's about 30 pounds of uh, torque to max 80, if I recall. Let's get started. I put a little extra dollop of anti-seize on the threads as well 
because you know this is a consumable part your barrel can burn out or wear out so you want to be able to possibly replace it in the future i'm just gonna thread it on by hand here come on baby here you go my dental pick so i can slide the that around so you have to line up on the back of this nut here yeah there's a spring a retaining clip and you have to line the gap of this up with the hole that is part of the delta ring and then line that up with one of these teeth so that way you want one of these teeth to be at top dead center that way you can actually slide the gas tube through let me just go ahead and snug her up and see what we get yeah. The spring is a lot easier to spin around than the retaining clip because that retaining clip is on there pretty tight. I know it might be hard for you all to see, but if I use my phone flashlight, you'll be able to see right there. You see the retaining clip and the spring. There's several coils of the spring that are underneath the delta ring here. And now I got it pretty much aligned up with the gas tube hole on the upper receiver. But the problem is, is I got to get it lined up with the barrel nut. So let's try that. Let me see. You would probably just want to torque it. <clears throat> oh yeah. Well, basically I'm going to torque it down and see where we're, where, where we're at essentially. Yep. That's 30 pounds right there. Let's find out. Oh yeah. That's 30 pounds. Yeah. So now I got to loosen her up again. I actually were planning on bolting this table to the floor, that way uh, a lot of the time when I'm torquing things or having to loosen a barrel nut, I need somebody to hold the table down because there are a few brands out there, I won't say any names, that I'm, they really over torque their barrel nuts at the factory. <laughs> and they don't use any anti seize or anything, so I'm talking heat gun, if you're a car mechanic or know a car mechanic, it's just like having a stuck bolt, it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. And tighten it one more time there. Get it nice. <clears throat> ha ha! Holy crap. That's pretty much almost there. That's 30 right there, yep. Yep. Let's get her lined up. Take her out of the vise, and then we can go back to the front where there's some more light, and I can put that gas tube in. Now that we got everything together here, let me make sure that that gap is properly aligned. There you go. And I should be able to see all the way through. And that's perfect. You see that the gas tube has a bend. Now, of course, when you have it installed, you want the bend hump to go up. Because as you see, it follows the curve of the barrel taper. But what you can do is turn it sideways like that. That way it clears your gas block, your front side gas block, slide it in, like so, rotate her around, and now we're ready to go in. So, let's get that in there. Oh, also, of course, make sure that your gas port, of course, is facing down towards the barrel, right? No gas is gonna come through there unless the hole is lined up right there. So we're gonna slide it back in there, like so. If you look closely here, you can just barely see the head of the gas tube there. That means we're about three quarters of the way. And we'll continue to slide it in. And you want to line it up so that way you can just perfectly see daylight there. Just need to give it a little love tap. I wasn't able to put enough pressure on the gas tube to slide it in by hand, so I was just able to give it a couple taps with uh, my little Fisher-Price mallet. 
And now, if you look, you should be able to see perfect daylight through that gas block, as if there's nothing there at all. And then we can just shove a pin in there, roll pin, and we'll be good to go. Generally speaking, when I'm putting pins in, whether, whether it's for the gas block or the gas tube, I like to support the other end of the barrel. Otherwise, you're kind of at an angle here and you can beat up your work surface or the receiver by hitting the table. And that just means you're respecting the material, right? So I got a pin here, got a punch. Try and line it up just so. Now, I'm doing this in a way that it would be replicating as if you were doing this at home. But generally, you would want to be using a starter punch. Essentially, a starter punch is the tip of the punch is slightly hollow, so it holds the pin in place and it allows you to drive it in halfway. So that way you don't have to finagle it like I just did. But, you know, I got working man's hands. I literally just pushed it in a little bit with the tip of my finger. Is that it? Is it in? Is that good? Yep. Is that, I feel like that pin went in too easy. No. Here we... I'm wiping down the barrel with an oily rag, at least underneath the handguard, because this is parkerized. And how they stay preserved is they like to soak up oil. Otherwise, they can give it rusty and mucky. Hmm. So I'm just going to try and mummify this a little bit before we seal it up in its coffin. So we got this lovely A1 hand guard that Mr. Battlefield Curator has supplied us. <laughs> Of course, you put that end in first, this end in second. Well, it doesn't matter. They're, they're basically both the same. They're just mirrored. And then pushing down the delta ring assembly is the hard part. Now, you might be wondering, what if I'm not strong enough to do it by hand? Well, there is a solution for you that I can show you, and you can buy this tool online. Uh, yeah, come on now. I got it about halfway there. You're usually going to encounter a problem like this where it's just almost there, but not quite. There you go. If you get one end pushed down on the delta ring and the other end is not one to go through, take a punch or something to be able to push it down and get some torque on it. So now. Let me get Functions a little checked. bit of, oh yeah. We need some oil. Yes, we do. Got a little bit of gun oil here. A little dropper bottle. What I like to do is put a couple drops just straight into the upper receiver with the top of it facing down because of course your charging handle rides up in there and you can see the wear marks from where the charging handle is rubbed in there. You can prevent further wear from happening by keeping that charging handle well lubricated. And of course, on a used AR, it's pretty easy because you can see the skid marks where the bolt rubs on the inside of the upper receiver. Boom. It's pretty smooth. So let's do a function check. All right, let's do bolt hold open manually. That works just fine. Let's check our safety here. Of course, gun unloaded, point in a safe direction. Safety works. Take it off safe. Charge it. Resets just fine. Perfect. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you guys picking up these uh, M16A1s from What a Country and Palmetto State Armory and wherever else they have uh, parts kits? This is Ben Wallace with MB Defense Solutions. You can contact him here. And be sure to pulverize that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Make it a great day. Security guard, though. Very sweet.
Yeah. She catch a lot of critters. No, but she catches springs. She catches a lot of Z's.